Thank you so much, DJ Chavan. And a major, major welcome to each and every one of us here today. And to all you amazing young faces, youth leaders, change makers from Africa. Hello, 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 Jumbo East Africa. We know that your life and your change making journeys as teens and also as young adults can at times be long and difficult. And indeed, like the Cameroonian proverb says, there are no shortcuts to the top of the palm tree. I mean, there could be no shortcut to your desired future and your success. Sometimes it takes a little motivation and support to overcome the obstacles. But today, we are Family Foundation and RISE have come together as partners to host this event, We Rise Africa, to bring like-minded youth leaders like yourself together to build community, share insight, and also inspiration, and also to learn about three specific really juicy opportunities that could really, really change the course of your life. Today, a crown of responsibility has been bestowed upon us as young people, and the world is looking up to us to quench her thirst, feed her hunger, and today, more than any time in history, the world is banking on us to cure its diseases. Now more than ever, the world is calling upon us to rethink, restore, and rejuvenate our systems of social justice. And without a doubt, this journey is not any way a walk in the park. We are Family Foundation and RISE are both well-known leaders in the youth impact space and will continue to uphold their commitment to building and amplifying young emerging voices like yours, as well as the dreams and social causes you care about, especially with respect to the African continent. Time and time again, um, young people have proven that when we come together, great things do happen. This is the same spirit that propelled Nelson Mandela while at the university to liberate South Africa. It is the same spirit that drives our quest for change and brings us together today. My name is Jessica Nasha, a 2018 We Are Family Foundation Global Team Leader and the founding president of the Eden Horticultural Hub. I am honored to be your co-host and MC today. I hope you're fired up for today. Make yourselves comfortable and we got you sorted. We Rise Africa is being hosted so that you can get inspired by the stories of global team leaders from Africa so you can network with your peers and also you can get more information on how you can take your life and impact to new levels through the initiatives and opportunities that WAF and RISE will tell you all about. But before I round this up, let me just quickly tell you something. See, let me just tell you something. You know, everyone has their doubts and everyone has their fears. But you just cannot stop making that effort. You can't stop shooting your shots now. Nah. And you can't stop going after what you really, really want. And it's never too early to start making a difference in your life. I mean, it might be tough. It might be, people might try to discourage you, but definitely your dreams are definitely doable. And we are here to show you that your dreams are possible. We're here to support all those positive vibes that you came with. Hopefully you came with some positive vibes. And we're also here to quench your doubts. So I hope that you leave here today inspired to see possibilities, where others see impossibilities. And we also hope that you leave here tooled up to continue in your change-making journeys, no matter your age. My name is Mirabel Mora, and I'm the editorial and communications head of Blank Papers Media. I was also selected as a 2018 Global Team Leader from Rare Family Foundation, as, and as your co-host and your MC for today. I just want you to relax. I just know that we'll take care of you, okay? Just relax and we'll take care of you for today. As I said earlier, we have an amazing lineup of panelists, and our panelists today also double as the co-chairs of this event. They are all We Are Family Foundation Global Teen Leader alumni, and they started out as teenagers, and now their impact is being felt both at local and global scales. Some of them have gone on to meet and advise top leaders. Some have received commendations from heads of state, and some are raising awareness on mental health issues in Kenya, and yet some have gone on to build game-changing technologies that are solving some of the most pressing socioeconomic challenges and so much more. You'll have the opportunity to ask our panelists any question you have ever wondered about being a youth leader. Or from, were you not afraid of what people would say? How did you convince a family uh, to start this journey? And so many more questions like that. And so, 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 so to jump right into our youth leadership panel today, let's welcome... Daniel Dake from Nigeria, 
Fossi Ferdinand from Cameroon, Godwin Ebba from Nigeria, James Okina from Nigeria, you know, Jeremiah Theronka from Sierra Leone, God, we have so many amazing people, my God. Joshua Oluwaseyi from Nigeria. And then not, last but not the least, this is a very special person too, Ruben Reeves from Liberia. And uh, welcome guys, welcome fam. But uh, it's, it's really, really sweet sitting down with all of you here today, although I'm still in my house. Also, you might have noticed that, you know, it's only guys that I called on this on this list. That's why, that's why we're here today. So I will get most of many of, if not all of you ladies to jump on board all the opportunities that we have today. You know, we need more female leadership here. You guys are awesome. I wish we could give you a high five from here. But yeah, we look forward to seeing more young ladies apply for opportunities from RISE and WAF and guys to apply, no problem, you're here as well. So first of all, to get right into the panel discussion, um, I'd first like to invite all our young panelists to you know, share a few sentences about themselves. And the first person I'll be calling on to introduce himself is Daniel Dake from Nigeria. Hi, everyone. Um, it's I'm super excited to be here. Uh, my name is Daniel Dake, and I'm a social entrepreneur. I'm a child rights advocate. I founded a project called the Tins for Change Foundation, and we are a family of young change makers who have taken the stand against the increasing rate of out of school street children from slum communities by providing them with an access to education and a vocational skills training free of course. So we started in 2016, going from one community to another. And so far we've been able to support 150 street children off the street. And it's been amazing. Oh, so many street kids. I mean, you're a young guy. Wow, thank you so much. And the next person we'll have to call on is Fossi Ferdinand from Cameroon. My name is Fossi Ferdinand. I'm from Cameroon. I'm a young and ambitious person, passionate about changing my community. I'm the founder of Educational Mill, an organization in Cameroon that helps and assists um, native students in the crisis-affected areas in Cameroon. And so far, we have reached out to over 400 plus students who are not going to school and we are helping them prepare for their exams with study materials and some tutorials. And we also um, run other projects in Cameroon that solves other educational needs like violence on campus. We're able to reach out to 10,000 plus students in their schools to sensitize them about violence and for them to stay peaceful in school. So yes, I remain humble and Nice being here, and I look forward to learning a lot from you all. Thank you. We look forward to learning so much from you, Fossey. Thank you so much. And the next person would be Godwin Egba from Nigeria. All right, thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. My name is Godwin Egba. I'm from Cross River State, Nigeria. And um, I run an organization that called DTL, Defining True Leadership. Basically, they equip and engage young people with tools to be academically successful and accelerate learning by providing study libraries in communities. And we have successfully established eight study libraries in five communities in Nigeria. Cross River State precisely. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was sweet and sweet, Godwin. Hello, everyone. My name is Yama Thonka, and I'm a Sierrainian. I describe myself as a disruptive innovator, entrepreneur, and scholar. I currently run a startup called Optim Energy, and the aim of Optim Energy is to make sure access to clean and affordable energy becomes a reality in Sierra rural area homes. As of today, we've been able to make access to energy reality for about 1,500 people, and we are so excited to see how we can continue scaling up our impact. Okay. Now, Ruben, Ruben, you're next. Please tell us about yourself. I'm Ruben. I'm from Liberia. I live in the Pinto area. Um, I started my nonprofit um, in 2017 with some friends um, trying to solve problem and the issue about poverty in our community using three main pillars, and that is entrepreneurship, education, mental health, um, with a bit of emphasis on, on um, technology, trying to transform the lives of thousands of young people um, around Liberia. Wow, so many change makers from Liberia to Cameroon to Nigeria, super quick. All right, and Joshua Luiwashi, you're up. Awesome. Hi, guys. My name is Joshua. I run a number of organizations that basically creates awareness um, on issues like environmental pollution, basically because I'm allergic to environmental pollution, air pollution specifically. Um, and since 2019, where it was founded, we've been able to reach millions of people on social media and cleaned up thousands of pounds of um, plastic waste. Uh, I'm excited to be here today. You know, there's a lot of talk about 
how can I find my purpose? I'm a 13 year old or I'm an 18 year old. How do I find my purpose? I don't really know what to do. So I just want to ask this super quick question. Joshua, for you, what inspired you to do what you're doing right now? And how did you know it was the right thing? You know, super quick, swift. How did you know it was the right thing for you to do? Finding that purpose. Yes. Thank you very much, Mara. Um, I think you never really know it's the right thing. But for me, I had the, I was fortunate because I had a cause that's personal to me. I, I learned that I was allergic to air pollutants, you know, fumigants, um, sniper, all of the stuff, um, and dust, pretty much. And if you live in Lagos, like me, you get to see that most of the cars are used service, which means there's a lot of fume coming out of their exhaust, right? Um, and I really wanted to do something, not because I wanted to change the world, in quotes, but because I wanted to save myself. I didn't want to walk on the road one day and then have an allergic reaction, you know? Um, so that was basically why I started, because I wanted to make people more aware that air pollution is literally killing people. Well, you, you just wanted to do something for yourself that ended up doing something for like some other people. Well, you start from yourself first. It's amazing. Thank you so much, Joshua. Godwin, you know, what was what were some resources that helped you when you were trying to build your organization and start out? What were tools or resources that helped you out? Thank you so much. First of all, I, I just want to say something that about age. Age is not an issue of mind. Age is actually an issue of mind over matters. That means if it doesn't if you don't mind, it doesn't matter. And while growing up, I was the desire to know more was really, really, really at its peak. So from that, because of that, I decided to look out for people that are actually ahead of me, start asking questions, you know. And then these mentors, they actually helped me by their hand and through, worked with me, you know, and um, you know, show me the different ways, the different path that I should go so I could achieve what I have already achieved and what I'm achieving, you know, moving forward. So number one, mentorship. Mentorship, that's one of my resources, one of the things that I take advantage, I took advantage of, you know, the people that were there for me to help me achieve my goals. Yeah, because of the time, I think I'll just stop there. Wow, thank you so much, Godwin. It's amazing. Your mentors helped you. And that's something also where Family Foundation did for me by giving me a mentor. And I also want to ask for Fossi, what is a resource that has helped you out in your change making growth? One of the things I respect the most um, is um, those around me, because I think um, this journey is not for one person. You can do it on your own. So I truly appreciate the people I have around me, the friends. Um, the family for the support because um, most of the work I do, I work with a lot of youths across Cameroon, over 54 of them. And these people, they volunteer their time, their resources. So it's a resource to have them help to, to better our community. So that I, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Well, if you want to go far, go alone. But if you want to go way, way, way farther, go together with people. And we know that we're young people and sometimes, you know, when you're trying to work on a project, people look down on you or people say X, Y, Z, or, you know, you, they have doubts that end up rubbing off on you. And um, Ruben, what was, what was a, a challenge you really faced? One of the biggest challenge I faced is usually about um, bringing a team together, a team that is committed, a team that is, you know, honest, a team that is trustful. That was the, one of the biggest challenge. But um, overcoming that challenge, it came up to myself like I had to be committed because I realized as a young person that I am not a leader of tomorrow. I'm a leader of today. And I'm only a policy maker for tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Um, we're going to be making policies. So I need to take action right now to empower young people. So the challenge is, is a lot, but the biggest thing is the team. And, you know, they, like that word inspired the desire to do something, you know what I'm saying, the commitment, and you know, you have to keep fighting. Some of these things actually rub off on teenagers, and it feels like their dreams are being halted because it feels like, I don't know, education is bad or inflation rates, but teenagers are literally feeling it. In one very short sentence or phrase, what advice would you give for, you know, youth leaders that are starting out, especially those who feel disconnected or feel very discouraged and are about to give up? You know, I think I would ask this question to Joshua Loeche. When I started, 
I didn't have the support that most people had, especially with family. Um, and although I knew I wanted to do something because I wanted to save myself, quote unquote, from air pollution, uh, there, there still has to be this level of, of passion to it. Um, the saying I often, the, the saying I often give whenever I have talks, it's that change begins with us. It's it's a bit cliche now because we hear it every day, but the truth is. Youth leaders, the term change maker, the term youth leader doesn't mean that you have to run a nonprofit organization. It doesn't mean you have to have a foundation. It simply means that you're doing something to change your communities. And what that could be is, you know, simple actions in your houses. You know, there's something called the, the, the United Nations Lazy Man's Guide to Change the World. You could turn up the water, you could practice a ritual of not throwing plastic with, not even drinking plastic drinks, you know, stuff like that. Um, and those are minor things I have to learn and I have to teach other people to do. And you just have to understand that um, you don't have to run the biggest empire to be a change maker. It starts with you. And what that means is anything you do works in changing the world. Thank you. Wow. And then Daniel, what is your piece of advice? I think the same with what Joshua just said. There haven't been a time to... Um, take up leadership position as now um, due to the whole things happening in Africa and I feel one of the misconceptualization we've had was um, young people are the leaders of tomorrow and this is a lie right because I feel like that tomorrow is today so if you're waiting for a tomorrow to come it's not coming so you have to start today so it, it begins with you just like Joshua has said you have to look at what you're good at and look out for someone to to, 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 to help them um, I think one of the things that helped me is I I always say this, if you have um, more clothes and you feel there's someone that needs a clothes, you can always reach out to them and help someone. So it's all about the one act of random kindness, right? So that's how change making begin. When I started to be a change maker, I didn't have the whole idea of reaching out to thousands of people. It just started with just reaching out to some few friends of mine. I felt like we needed to, um, to change their life. I needed to impact them since they are my friends. So the vision kind of like grew from just my friends to other people. So that's how change making begins. It starts with you. It starts with you impacting your community, your um, your sphere of contact, and it just grows, right? It just grows from just you to 10 people, to five people, to, to 1,000, to 2,000, and it keeps growing. My advice to you young guys is, the future of your local community is in your hands. It's never too late to start creating impact, no matter how small it is. The little things we do really do matters. Thank you. I'm speechless. I'm just speechless. I don't know if you're proud of this family, but like I am so proud of every single person on this call. James, can you just briefly introduce yourself? My name is um, James Okina. It's really a pleasure to be here and, um, and just also soaking so much wisdom from everyone who's uh, who's been sharing. So thank you. <laughs> I don't want to say something that so sounds much. too cliche. <laughs> I don't want to say something. I wanted to say just start, but that sounds so cliche. But anyway, I think um, I think if there's any time to do something you're really passionate about, I think it's now. So just just go for it. Please join me in welcoming Modesto Joseph from Tanzania, Eli Savatia from Kenya, Francis Eki from Uganda. Michelle Abiero from Kenya, Doreen Michael from Tanzania, and Zian from Tanzania. Welcome, guys. Welcome, fam. It's really, really amazing to be with the family again here today. And if I could start with you, Francis, please briefly introduce yourself and share with us what you do. Thank you so much. Um, it's always exciting um, to, you know, be part of this very energetic and vibrant community. So my name is Francis Eki and I'm from Uganda and I'm a global team leader from the class of 2013. Um, I, I must say it was one of the most life-changing experiences of my life. Um, so uh, just a brief about who I am and what I do. So I currently work for an organization called the African Leadership Academy in South Africa, which uh, has a, a bold uh, mission to develop the next generation of ethical and entrepreneurial leaders. It is something that um, I care about a lot and it's also part of my why, like why I do what I do. Because when I was younger, I was always interested in, in sort of solving some of the challenges in my school and my community. I, as I grew older, I realized 
we needed more people who are passionate about solving problems to be able to do so. So when I was um, about 16 years old, I started an organization called the Young Entrepreneurs Challenge in Kampala to uh, you know train and and encourage you know high school students to be involved in you know social issues and be involved in entrepreneurial ventures um, to take themselves out of poverty and also address the other challenges that come as a result of poverty. So my commitment, my life commitment, has become to really focus on youth development. Amazing. Amazing. Quite an inspiration already. I feel fired up. I'll give this opportunity to Michelle Abiero from Kenya to introduce herself uh, and tell us what amazing work she's doing. Thank you so much, Jefferson. Uh, my name is Michelle Abiero. I am from Kisumu, Kenya, and I am the co-founder of Project Smile. Project Smile is a project that was started with an aim of developing awareness on mental health and suicide here in Kenya. So we do this by raising awareness uh, on mental illnesses generally and mental health in Kenya, since it's such a taboo uh, topic in Kenya. So we do this using digital platforms such as social media, um, Instagram, YouTube, you think of it, we do that. We're trying to create engaging content that is consumable to both the younger generation and the older generation when it comes to mental health and trying to reduce the stigma towards mental health. And I'm also the co-founder of Humans Against Sexual Violence, which is an initiative by Project Smile to create a safe space uh, for survivors of sexual violence to also um, raise awareness on sexual violence, again, since it's a very, very taboo topic. So we even took part in the 16 days of activism against gender-based violence. Uh, one of the people who helped me come up with some of the content uh, for 16 days of activism is here. Hi, Sonia Joy. So thank you so much. That's what I do. Amazing, amazing, amazing. With us today as well, we have an amazing lady from Tanzania, Modesta Joseph. Please introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, my name is Modesta Joseph. I'm from Tanzania. And I'm the founder of OVA, uh, Voices Against Harassment. So when I started, we were working on um, ending student harassment in public transportation, but now we to a more permanent problem in our, in our country, Tanzania, which is sexual abuse and harassment to um, young girls and women. So we provide a reporting platform for them, and we also encourage them to speak up and get necessary support that they need. Yeah, so that's what we do, and we raise awareness in the community about those issues. So, yeah, hey, from Tanzania. Modesta has just been named as a frontliner. You'll be learning what a frontliner is in a few. Uh, but before that, uh, let's hear from Zian from Tanzania as well. As Jeff mentioned, I'm Zian. I'm 19 years old, and I'm also a GTL 2019. I'm the founder of an organization called For the Menstruator, and basically what we do is we aim to create a world of menstrual equity. Being a GTL was honestly a life-changing experience because when I say that, um, just to give you a short sort of example, going into GTL, our organization only supported 350 menstruators. But as I'm speaking today, we supported 8,000 menstruators in the last year. So it's honestly been life-changing. It's helped me found my purpose um, and also provided me with the resources and the platform and our community that I can rely on. And I'm really excited to get to know you all. Thank you, Zian. Thank you very much. We also have from Tanzania another amazing lady, Doreen Michael. The floor is all yours. My name is Doreen Michael, and I'm a GTL um, class of 2020 from Tanzania, the founder of Renotify, where I work um, to stop truancy and also reduce the number of dropouts for students by providing them a more suitable integrated school management system for them to have easier access to access um, their attendance and also their grades um, online. But also I'm the founder of Clarity where I work around mental health, trying to lower the stigma on mental illnesses and also um, relieve people from the burden of heavy expenses cost for therapy. So now they can have therapy sessions online with our team of therapists. Yeah, welcome to the family, all of you. Thank you, thank you so much, Doreen. Ali, take it away. My name is Eli Savatia. I'm a 2020 GTL. I'm a tech optimist, and I'm so glad to meet you all here today. Um, I'm currently building a technology startup called Sekani, and uh, we are leveraging the power of artificial intelligence to smartphone devices to help us bridge the accessibility and communication barrier between the deaf and the hearing communities. Um, earlier, I founded Innovate for SDGs, and it's a nonprofit which envisions to educating and uniting young people under the message of SDGs. 
and the long term vision is to influence education curriculums to transcend beyond knowledge sharing and influence innovation to achieve the global goals a lot of young people are worried about how to start and many wonder if actually they have the potential so for you what inspired you to start um, the journey of being a change maker perhaps i start with you michelle for me what it took its passion what really drives you is why you are doing it why are you doing what you're doing when you're waking up what is your why like for your day so for my why it was i wanted to transform how people view mental health in kenya i was tired of the stigma towards mental health so why do you do what you do i do what i do because of the statistics i see around mental health 800,000 people die per year to suicide and that in itself was very very concerning to me as a person and i said what is the little that i can do to change this what is the little that i can do to solve this issue in my community and I took those steps. So I learned a bit of, uh, the more and more I progressed, I learned more about mental health. I did the steps, which for me was creating an Instagram account. It's less than five minutes to do that. What is next? Creating resources for mental health. And really, it's why you do what you do and you get that drive. Your, pa- your passion should be your drive. Amazing, amazing. For Michelle, the numbers were not just a statistics. The numbers on suicide were not just a statistics, but they were a cue for her to start her work. Um, Francis, what's your story? What's your inspiration? For me, it was a, a, a result of just reflecting and being grateful for the opportunities um, that had been that I'd been fortunate enough to be a part of and also be conscious of my environment, right? So I feel like um, it starts from, first of all, knowing yourself and knowing um, what's around you and, and then getting the drive to think, you know, like what what is the small thing that I can do um, to make a difference, um, you know, to, 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 you know, to make the place, like to make my community better, right? Um, because um, so many of us young people, um, are privileged with opportunities to go to school and um, opportunities to connect and network with, you know, organizations like, you know, global team leaders. But I guess for me, for young people, I would say you should always ask yourself, you know, what can I do with my privilege, right? Also, the next thing that I I got to learn in, in my early years was don't be afraid to ask for help, right? Because many times, you know, you have the small idea um, and you, you're probably afraid. But I think, you know, being open to talking to other people, elders or other young people about what you're thinking of doing and also recruiting a team because um, it, it worked out so great for me. Right. Um, so for me, I think, you know, it takes it takes understanding your privilege and, and, and also having the willingness to to be ready to be open to failure, but knowing that you at least failed while trying to uh, pursue a cause. Amazing. Amazing. Francis, you just talked about how, you know, we should be willing to bring other people on board. And at this point in time, I want to invite Ellie and Zian because both of them have done incredible work in building youth movements across East Africa. Ellie and Zian, how are you able to rally your peers to support your cause? And why is it necessary for young people and young change makers to collaborate and build the spirit of community? Embrace is that we, the young people, um, definitely we will be inheriting the world 10 years from now. And looking at the 2030 agenda, um, like how can we put ourselves in spaces where we can actively shape the kind of world that we want? So that's one of the things that really stand out the most for us is like uh, young people knowing the paramount role that they play when it comes to realizing a better future. Amazing. Zian? Um, I would say, I think when I started off, obviously, it was, I started off with my own vision and it was an idea that I had personally that I realized to solve any problem in this co- in this world, like, you can't work alone. This world is very big and you can't take and solve all the problems. So it's so important to involve young people and share that vision, share that purpose with others. There are some people on this call that I invited that I've worked with before and How you do that is, is again, just advocate and show that you're passionate about something. But it's also important to realize that I think young people, again, are the leaders of not only tomorrow, but the leaders of today. We need to start now. We need to solve this problem today. And as we have seen on this call, we have amazing people on the front line and are doing some amazing things to solve this issue. So just having that mindset of starting today 
um, taking leadership today, I think is so important, but because again, tomorrow never comes. It's just amazing how you talk about how most of the time we postpone the mandate of young people by calling them leaders of tomorrow. And this especially has been the case or has affected like so many young women. And Modesta and Doreen, both of you have been on the front line of advocating for gender equality and amplifying the role of women in strengthening change movements. So from your experiences, how do we encourage and nurture more women in youth leadership to move from calling them leaders of tomorrow to making them leaders of today? The first thing is to um, give them um, opportunity uh, because, you know, girls need to be empowered because the community is, um, have given some priorities or privilege to the other gender for the most of the time, um, or let's say in the past. So for now, we need to actually um, give them the voice and an opportunity for them to take action. And that means um, empowering them. Uh, for example, in my experience working with girls, they are very smart. <laughs> they are very, very, very smart. So they deserve that opportunity too. So I think one thing is actually empower them and give them the opportunity to do what they want to do or what they wish to do. If it's to change their community, enable them to do that. It's true. Women are very strong when it comes to change making and taking um, the platform of leadership. Um, but one thing is that everyone has an interest. It's just a matter of how are we actually bringing out this interest or showing them that um, this is actually the right path or you should really like have that much of interest in this because it's not a matter of picking somebody's curiosity it's more of making them involved so if we actually um create a more comfortable platform also safe environment for women to actually participate in matters of leadership and for them to be able to stand out and the voice to be heard um it's more engaging for them and it's also more empowering for them to take part in leadership so simply um empowering them more but also creating a safe space for them in terms of leadership for them to embrace this will be able to make them more comfortable around it jeff am i able to chime in to the issue of um being leaders of tomorrow and how we can change that notion Yes, Michelle, and as you chime on that, uh, in about 30 seconds, also please tell us what has been your greatest challenge and what tools or resources you've used to overcome the challenges in your uh, change-making journey. Sure thing. When it comes to the issue of being leaders of tomorrow, a lot of times, be it in school, be it at home, you're told, hey, we're leaders for tomorrow, we're leaders for tomorrow. But the thing is, we're currently living in today. We're living in today. So when we look at the fact that we're living in today, that means we're living with, let's say, poor health care or poor access to health care. That means we're living with gender inequality. That means we're living with, you know, um, not as many STEM opportunities for youth in Africa. That means we're living with lack of mental health awareness. So what action are you taking towards that today? What are you doing about that today you can't tell yourself you're going to solve that issue tomorrow tell yourself i'm trying to solve this issue today you're not too young to do that you're not too young to change what you're seeing as an issue within your um continent or your basically your home country your community you're not too young for that you're a leader of today and you need to start working on the issues you're seeing today uh, moving on to the co other question jeff has asked i feel like one of the hugest challenges that i've faced is definitely the fact that i am not a doctor i am not a psychiatrist so i can sit down and tell you hey this is what you know mental health is and mental health is that and all that so at times you know there's always that notion of hey you aren't qualified to be talking about mental health so why are you talking about mental health and a lot of times i have been asked hey you're not qualified so why are you talking about mental health and i'll tell you why i'm talking about mental health it, it's because i'm passionate about it i'm passionate enough to educate myself on it and to seek the um, knowledge from people who are very knowledgeable on that i have psychologists and psychiatrists on you know on my phone and be willing to hey have i said this correctly about let's say bipolar or borderline personality disorder and just be willing to learn so those are some of the hugest challenges i've faced another one was definitely um not having a team and that can be really really difficult uh one thing francis said is do not be scared to ask for help it is daunting to ask for help it is very very daunting to ask for help but what is the worst that could happen the person would say no and you move on Look for people who have a similar goal as yours if you want a team to enjoy working with. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle. You know, so much has been happening across East Africa right now. And, you know, amidst the pandemic, we're talking about Uganda facing police brutality and a political crisis. Kenya's corruption menaces like at unprecedented levels in history. 
if we go to Tanzania, the diplomatic relationships between Tanzania and Kenya is dwindling as each day goes by. So I want to invite you know, all our panelists in just 15 seconds, please share one mighty sentence, one strong sentence or phrase where you'd be advising our young leaders today, you know, especially those that are starting out, you know, what, what word do you have for them? If you see something wrong in your community and you'd like to change it, go for it. Do not be scared. And failure is not going to kill you. Failure is not going to kill you, actually. Failure is not going to kill you. You will get several no's before you get a yes. So do not be scared. Do not ho- let failure hold you back or fear. Um, I would say that despite all the unprecedented time and all the uncertainty we are in, I feel like in that there is still opportunity. They usually say in chaos comes opportunity. So the difference between a change maker and a normal person is a change maker will find that opportunity opportunity and look at ways in terms of making the situation better i think it's just so important for us and i'm honestly so hopeful especially the people on this call i just think i'm really hopeful and i think that things amazing things are coming for us okay so i'm going to tell you that where there's you can't see light if there's no darkness first as a change maker if like you have something that you want to do out there i'll say go for it and don't be scared for what people are going to say or don't be scared of criticisms because those are what empower you the more criticized you are the more um, you know when to improve and the more you know where to change so go for it and also know your purpose in life you being out there you making changes is actually a chance for people out there to be able to support you and improve the lives of many people out there so do it try it fail and be proud to fail amazing amazing francis the words i'd say i'll borrow the words of mama peace um she always reminds us that you matter because why it's very important to always remember that you matter is that as young people you're trying to tackle problems that are bigger than yourself and Mm -hmm. many times you'll be pressured many times you'll feel like you're inadequate but that should never stop you from um, being passionate and being committed to the cause that you're trying to um, to solve for so no matter how small or how slow the progress if you're convinced about the problem you want to solve please always remind yourself that if however small the impact is you matter parting would be like start with empathy and develop into action. And as my mentor, Jeff, usually says, um, keep the hope alive and speak courage fluently. Thank you. Your actions matter. Um, I've, seen, I've seen and heard many young people saying, well, what can I really do? That's not, that's not the point, you know, because the smallest thing that you can do will actually increase the momentum of everything. So I think we should all know that we can contribute in every small way that we can because our actions matter to create that bright future that we want. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I'll take one question from Sonia here. So Michelle, uh, Sonia asks we, we, Sonia asks that with this type of project or with your project, were there moments when you felt that your work wasn't making as big of an impact as you thought it would? Absolutely. There's so many times I felt that. But the thing is, what I would like to say when it comes to that, I'd rather change one person's mind on something than change no one's mind on something. If um, we look at the issue of police brutality in Kenya, I'd rather for one person to be educated on police brutality in Kenya or Uganda than for no one to be educated. That one person that you're educating on this, that one person that you're changing their lives using what you're doing is much more important than not changing anyone. I would love to welcome We Are Family Foundation and RISE to tell us more about the incredible opportunities that are lined up for us and that are available for you today. And Personally, I had the privilege of being selected as a global team leader in the year 2018. And I can never stress enough of the impact of finding my best support system in a global community of young rockstar change makers from every corner of this planet. We are Family Foundation and Rise to tell us more about the incredible, incredible is a small word, but an incredible opportunities that they have right now for us. And um as I said, I'm a 2018 global team leader and I spent one week in New York, but it was a very rich experience having to have a mentor who mentored me for one year and even beyond that and connect with so many of the young people who are here. And, you know, this one year of my life, my, my mentor always told me, Mirabel, don't watch things too much. This is your learning period. It was very nice to have a 
an accountability partner and someone to guide me through that process when I was 19. So WAF and RISE will be telling you about more, giving you more information and opportunities that can help you to level up and also join this incredible global community of ours. You're already here, so you're part somehow. Um, please help me welcome Jodi from RISE and Annie and Chamba from We Are Family Foundation. They will be taking questions. So I welcome Jodi. And Jodi, it's a real honor to have you from RISE. Please sweep us off our feet. Take it away from here, Jodi. It is an absolute honor to be here. And thank you so much for welcoming RISE into the We Are Family family. Um, so I am Jodi, the program administrator administrator at RISE. And, you know, we decided to partner with We Are Family Foundation because we have a shared goal of empowering young people around the world by, prov by providing awesome opportunities to use their brilliant ideas and extraordinary talents for good in order to have a really positive impact on the world. So today I'm going to tell you who we are looking for for RISE, how we're doing it, and the benefits of applying. So we know that talent is everywhere, but opportunity is definitely not. We also know that traditional talent identification methods, such as standardized tests and writing essays and grades don't always capture the full range of talent in youth or even talent in unidentified areas. And RISE is really working to find those young people in those hard to reach areas and level them up. So we're super interested in applicants who display character traits, such as integrity, perseverance, empathy, and brilliance. And we really care way more about an applicant's passions and what motivates them to do more good in the world instead of caring a lot about their standardized tests or the high grades that they get in school. So through RISE, what we did was we harnessed the power of technology that we know is so native to so many young people to provide an application platform that allows young people to connect with each other around the world and to create this global family and this global community. RISE provides a lifetime of support to the 100 RISE Global winners each year. And that support includes funding for education, seed funding for your social ventures and enterprises, mentorship and career services, and there will also be a residential program in the first year of winning. And I really want to emphasize the lifetime of support aspect about RISE because all of the support is tailored to each of the 100 individuals needs and really grows with the individual as they move through their life and grow and continue to do more good in the world. But we also believe that it's definitely not just about the final 100 who win. Everyone who applies to RISE will get something out of it, whether it's networking with peers around the world, um, online learning resources or access to additional opportunities that are also featured on our application platform or through our partners. But we also know that not all young people have access to data and the internet. So we created a WhatsApp pathway, which I'm super excited that launched on Monday to ensure that more young people around the world can access the application to apply. So in summary, RISE is open to 15 to 17 year olds around the world, doesn't matter where you are. You can go to the iOS App Store or Google Play Store to download the app and start your application. It is completely free to apply. And the application deadline is January 29th. Amazing. Thank you so much, Jody. Um, so many incredible opportunities through RISE, y'all. Thank you for sharing more about those in details with us. And um, I'll dive right in if that's okay, Mirabelle. Hi, everyone. Hello. I am so excited to be here. It is so amazing to see all of your faces. I just want to say thank you to everyone, especially our guests um, who are joining on this call today to learn more. Thank you for your interest, yes, in our programs and in these opportunities, but more importantly, um, for your interest in shaping the future of our planet and in all of our global communities. I think just by being here and by, by showing up, you've proven that you care um, and that you want to make a difference. So thank you for that. We see you. Um, my name is Annie Green, and I have the esteemed privilege of calling myself the program director for 3.Dash. Um, so what exactly does 3.Dash do? Who exactly is it for? How can I apply? Um, you just got a lot of amazing answers to those questions from our incredible host, Mirabelle, and our very inspiring panelists of, you know, consisting of global team leader alumni. But I want to try to quickly offer even more insights into those same questions. Um, in a nutshell, 3.Dash powers the most influential social entrepreneurs between the ages of 13 to 19 who have found a solution or innovation to address a basic human 
need. And what are our basic human needs exactly? Education, the environment, health, safety, food, shelter, water. Think the big buckets, the things that we all need to survive and that we all deserve as basic human rights. Um, so each year, 3.dash carefully selects 30 to 35 of these teenagers who are working to ensure that everyone has access to these basic human rights. And these are young innovators and pioneers who have ideated unique solutions to these really longstanding problems. Um, and more often than not, as you heard in part today from some of our panelists, these young people came to these solutions because they personally or someone they know in their life faced these problems themselves. Um, and I'll offer you another example of a global team leader and who a global team leader is. And this is someone that's not on our call today. But imagine for me a 16-year-old girl who experiences cyberbullying, horrible cyberbullying. And in response to that trauma, she then decides that she doesn't want anyone else to go through what she did. So what does she do? In this case, she teaches herself how to code and she develops an algorithm to help prevent cyberbullying on all smart devices. And she makes incredible progress doing exactly that. But at some point in her work, she decides that she could use some extra support in growing her work and advancing her work and getting things off of the ground. And Likely and similarly, she also decides that she'd really love to meet other young people who are like her in that they also want to change the problems that they've personally experienced. So what does she do? You've probably guessed it. She applies to 3.dash and she's accepted as a global teen leader. And what that means is that she and her fellow global teen leaders that year get to participate in a full year of programming with us at 3.dash, just like Mirabelle and all of her panelists have. Um, and what does that start with? That starts with something that we call the Just Peace Summit. And at this summit, whether it's in person in New York and it's freezing, like Mirabelle said, or if it's you know virtual, uh, depending on the type of year we're having, like the year we've had this year, um, global teen leaders learn about storytelling and community building and peace and conflict and conflict resolution. And they get to know one another and they create these new avenues of support and collaboration. And they hear from speakers and participate in workshops. And they spend this deep and meaningful time thinking both creatively and about not only what they do and how, but why it is that they do what they do. And in addition to that summit, um, each global team leader is also, as you've heard, matched with a very carefully handpicked mentor, an amazing mentor who commits to working with them for at least an entire year to help them take their work and their impact to the next level. Um, and Allie Kaplan, who is the We Are Family Foundation Community Director, who is on this call today. Hi, Allie. Uh, she runs our mentor program. And let me tell you, she's no joke, y'all. Our mentors are insane experts of industry and impact. Some of our mentors in the past have included just to name a few, the science advisor for Bill Gates, Oprah's chief of staff, the grandsons of Nelson Mandela, the daughter of Malcolm X, and many, many, many more. So in review, and I'm sorry if I'm rambling here a little bit, um, Global team leaders, they're, they apply, they're accepted, they go to summit, they meet their other global team leaders, they get a mentor, and then what? Then they get to work with their mentor, with their newly expanded toolkit of skills and with the support and backing of this global family and their work and their impact, it grows exponentially. Um, and specifically to go back to that example I used, uh, that young woman who was cyberbullied, her mentor happened to be the head of a huge and leading global technology company. And together, after taking her algorithm and building an app with it, and then working on its worldwide distribution using the same storytelling skills she learned at Summit, they observed cyberbullying rates and targeted groups go down as much as 93%. 93%, that's absolutely incredible. So I think the point of that example and all of this, and you know, like Daniel and Mirabelle both reminded us on this call today, it can start with you. Just like it started with the young woman after being cyber bullied, it can also start with you. The answer and the change to the things that you are experiencing or you're watching your community experience, they can start with you. And maybe it already has. So 
Should you be working on something yourself? Should you have a unique solution to a problem or an issue in your community? Please consider applying as a global team leader. We want to know you. We want to work with you. We want to help you scale your work. We want to welcome you into this amazing global family of ours. So let's please work together. Um, applications for 2021 global team leaders are actually open right now as we speak. And you can learn more about all of this and more on our website. And I can put the um, particular apply page in the chat in a moment. Um, but please consider applying. The deadline to apply is coming up. It's in just about two weeks and we really hope that you do apply. Now I want to kick things over to my incredible colleague and dear, dear friend Chamba, who's going to tell you a little bit more about another amazing We Are Family Foundation program and resource. So thank you so much and Chamba, take it away. All right. Thank you so much, Annie. And thank you so much, everyone. It's so good to be here. It's so good to see your beautiful faces and just seeing from the conversation in the chat that different projects, different folks are working on. You're all such a powerful group and you're all inspiring. So I just want to power you on. Thank you for what you do. My name is Chamba. And speaking of the program that Annie was talking about, that's actually how I got introduced into this family. So I was a global teen leader in 2013. And I came in for my work, which I'm still doing here in Malawi, which focuses on creating spaces that allow education and economic opportunities to women and other marginalized identities here in Malawi. And so with that, when I came in in 2013, I was also paired with a power mentor who is on this call right now and was dancing to my beats. Yeah, your mentors will dance to your music. So there's also that. But um, my power mentor and I actually work on this program that I'm about to share about called Youth to the Front Fund, which started this year in June and, um, you know, building up to why it initiated in June, though there had been a lot that had been going on just this year, 2020 was very heavy for all of us. We've seen different movements uh, pick up in different countries, just um, recognizing the different injustices. We had NSARS, which is still going on in Nigeria. We had Black Lives Matter movement in the US, which then in June was also at the peak with the murder of George Floyd. And so there was a lot that was building up. And what we constantly saw when you're looking at the photos coming from events, looking at just um, the footage or people speaking up on behalf of events, was that young people were at the forefront of it. And so just to backtrack a bit on that, just for me, myself, as a founder of an organization, I had so much fire, and I still have it. I had so much fire when I was starting my organization at 16 and shaping it out. But I remember studying and one of the main stresses was always just funding okay how are we going to do this i would love to do this i'd love to reach more people i wish we could um get a space i wish we could just get get, get more in place and it's always this constant search looking for opportunities on where can i get funding and when you look at the resources that are available in terms of funding usually they want you to have of several structures in place. So if I remember some of the chat, like, oh, my organization isn't registered yet, let me get registered. And then, oh, I actually might need a 501c3 registration, which is the ideal for, for most organizations, especially if you're getting US funding or international funding. Um, and to get that is a whole other process. And so for young people, with the fire that we have within us when it comes to funding and the platforms and what they require in terms of accessing that, it can be very discouraging. And so we're seeing young people at the forefront of movements, but then we're seeing that the funding is not prioritizing young people who might not have the structures needed to to get access to the funding. And so there's just that opportunity gap in a sense. And so the purpose, youth to the, the purpose of Youth to the Front coming up was to bridge that gap, to make sure that yes, young people can organize, but also young, yes, young people can organize with the fuel for organizing, which is money and also be healthy themselves, make sure that they're taking care of themselves and their teams and just everyone is covered. And so Youth to the Front Fund, focuses on young people all around the world. So everyone, everywhere, whether you're in the Middle East, North Africa, West Africa, East Africa, Asia, Latin America, Eastern Europe, wherever you are, if you're under 30, you are eligible to apply for funding. And what we're looking for is people that are, that are at the forefront of fighting some kind of systemic inequality, systemic racism, systemic injustice, um, any kind of inequity. And so 
you know, it varies by countries and different countries have different challenges. For instance, one of the frontliners, which, which is what we call the grantees, that has been awarded a grant this year, she's in Zambia and what she's noticed is that there's misinformation in terms of the voting and the upcoming election. And so she's going around and sort of giving access to what's needed in terms of voting. And there were a lot of um, frontliners just this year that we're working during the U.S. election, just making sure that there's no voter suppression. And so, you know, it varies by country. There is Blessing from Nigeria who has a project. Um, she focuses on making sure spaces are accessible for people with disabilities. So she's installing um, access ramps to buildings, to schools, so that someone on a wheelchair can easily access a building. And so, you know, that kind of inequity, the kind of injustice that's been set up, that's... Um, preventing various people from accessing something or accessing an opportunity or just existing or living and yeah, be, being at peace is something that is critical for us to make sure that um, you're working on that and you're finding the means to break that injustice. And so, yeah, if you have any questions, if you have a project that needs fuel, do look at the Youth to the Front Fund um, application and it's all on the website. Just checking the time, but I think I'm good. But it's all on the website and I'm here to answer any questions. Thanks so much, Chamba. I think this is such too much little time for us to actually delve into the great, amazing opportunities that um, you guys have spoken about today. But Victor Arumose has a question to ask. He says, what can you do to register your organization when you're less than 18 years of age. I think this should be part of something Jamba said. Ooh, it's, um, it's a headache, but it also really, it depends per country. And so um, it, it's one thing to look at is where you are. And then um, if maybe, if you're under 18, you could maybe find a parent organization temporarily. So for, so for instance, my organization, Tuwale, um, we, we're not a 501c3, but what we found is a fiscal sponsor. So they receive funding and other things on behalf of us, and then they channel the money to us. And so if you, if there's always ways around, or you can find someone who can register temporarily on your behalf, and then they can help with that access. But as I said, it all depends on country, what country you're in. So I might not be the best person also to comment on that right now. Ruth has a very interesting question. She says, do, prospect, do prospective applicants need to have running initiatives or organizations when applying, or are they fine with just ideas they wish to implement? And I think I would like to ask this question to Jody and Waf if we could quickly answer the question. It can either be an idea or a project that you are working on. We care about both. I'll speak quickly on behalf of 3.Dash. Um, while we love and encourage ideas and want to foster those and see them grow, to be a global team leader and apply to 3.Dash, you need to have something to show for your work. So you need to be pushing past the idea phase and into implementation phase. You can be in various stages of implementation. Um, we're not looking for you to be all the way up here, but you do need to be beyond idea. Wow. So I just want to say thank you so much. It has been spectacular very special thank you to we have family foundation and rise for bringing all of this together i wanted to know that you are never too young to make an impact like ellie said earlier speak courage fluently keep hope alive you know push those buttons of a moral evolution that the world right now so desperately needs you know shake those tables of the status quo let your quest of moving change forward become your rhythm because as we say in we are family this rhythm is our heartbeat, and this heartbeat is what makes our tribe. We young people are the future of now. We are the leaders of today and the policymakers of tomorrow. So you are never too young to start anything. And we hope that from every single thing you've learned and heard here, that you begin to change your perspective and see possibilities where others see impossibilities. This is not the end, and we hope to connect again with you very soon thank you so much for being here i love you guys welcome to my family in a sense please let's keep this bit going